Shalom. I want to say, Kor Halal Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak, Wadash, double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well over the flock. Shalom and salutation to you, brothers out here, for some words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the Akim and Akwa for listening and paying attention. All right, redeeming the times. Um, this video is just going to be um, quick and just a general reminder, right, of the Most High, his plan is to destroy this place. We got to meditate and keep a mind frame that no matter what we get ourselves into, um, no matter where, how far you might think you got in this society, this society is on a decline. I ain't just talking about what the stock market does every so often up and down. I'm talking about overall, it's on a decline. It's on its way out. At one point in time, Rome, as strong as it was, went down. Greece went down. All of these places, ancient world empires went down. America's turn is next. And so, you know, you strategize, you, you deal with your daily bread, you go to work, you know, you get paid, you do what you got to do. I mean, you meet people, you meet friends, you, you connect, right? Or you might just be at home dealing with video games and, and, and stressing out. However your life is, man. Constantly um, use the scriptures to remind you and help you know and help is certified and sink in your mind that um, this place, America, is on its way out, which means it's going to be pelted with thermonuclear fire by the enemy nations. They're going to turn on this place. The scriptures tell you that the nation shall hate the whore. This is Babylon. This is that great whore, all right, that sitteth upon um that beast, which is NATO and EU. So America is that whore that's going to be pelted and destroyed by these other conglomerate nations. And um, the scriptures are going to help you uh, really put your mind in check because everything you see visibly around you is one day going to be visibly on fire. Whether you from the, on the chariots and one of the, of the saved, Lord willing, that's who we are, of the men that in the in, in the elect that get to be redeemed and saved out of this destruction, or whether you are going to be a part of that destruction, fuel for the fire, just know that it has an ending. It has an expiration date. How do you treat anything that's disposable and has an expiration date? You don't put that much faith into it. You don't put that much uh, uh, energy into it. Put energy into things that last eternal. Let's get into some scriptures. So we're in the book of Ezekiel 2, verse 8. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth. And eat that I give thee. And when I looked, and behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. You go into that word lamentations, it means another definition here. I'll go into the Hebrew or the yeah. Real quickly. It actually means a funeral song. <clears throat> you see an elegy, a dirge, and the elegy is basically a funeral song. Literary English literature and elegy is a poem of serious reflection, usually a lament for the dead. Right? So inside these scriptures is written lamentation, woe, funeral songs. <laughs> and it's written in the roll on both sides of a book. That book is the scriptures. And it's telling you and it's giving you warning that you need to take heed to before certain lamentations and woe and mourning begin. In Isaiah 34 and 16, it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. So it's telling you right here. There's not one prophecy that's going to be shut out. That's not going to come to pass. So the Heavenly Father, his words is true. And his words that he sent, he gave his prophets to prophesy of destruction before it happens. It always came to pass. Now, the prophets are set up in these last days, in these end times, starting with the apostles of 
great millstone, of course. Men who fervently push this word and have proven themselves through the spirit of Yahweh Shem to be great leaders of and servants to Yahweh Shem have pushed, pushed this word, you know. And uh, uh, for anybody that's seeking to return to the Lord, you have your habitation, you have a dwelling place, you know, figuratively in this in this truth. It says, none of shall want her mate, so there's no equal to these scriptures. It says, from my mouth it hath, from my mouth it hath commanded in his spirit, it hath gathered, gathered them. So, it goes from our mouth, but the spirit of the Lord is what turns men back. And have you awakened to the atrocities and the danger and the perils that you're in? You know, it's a frightful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. So you wake up to that, Isaiah 3 and 11. And these are the things that are written inside the Bible, that your basic and average pastors in the church won't make any money if they start teaching you these things. Isaiah 3 and 11, Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. So we can understand the mind of the Most High in the Scriptures. The Most High, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, seeks payback is a righteous judge is a a just power and he's gonna he's never gonna acquit the wicked so when you go through all the blood shed on this land here in america it comes naturally that you can expect the lord to devastate this place then look at the abominations what month are we in it should be a natural thought that the Lord, if you understand that he has thrown down societies and kingdoms greater than this one, older than this one, that this is going to be a light thing for him. But he's going to use this opportunity to deliver his elect and once again show his power. <clears throat> I'm going to read a little bit of Isaiah 30. <clears throat> because in this society, you get things, you get little perks. You know, and it's really, it all goes down to the fact that you have a slight inferiority complex when you're raised here in America. And you can never see yourself um, in a ruler seat, in a kingdom, in an empire that's led in righteousness. You pretty much sell out for the little perks that you get here in America. Houses, food, jobs, family. But you don't have to sell yourself short. You know, it's to start with your mindset, understanding that there's going to be a great fierce judgment that's sent from on high to this place, America. So it's not going to last. And that's a beautiful, confident thought for the Lord's elect. Right. The scriptures tell you there is no continuing city here. Jeremiah 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, save the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So you've sold... Out, whether you knew it or not, if you have taken on a different covering, see, the Lord is a power that understands your mind. He knows that your actions reveal what you, which the intents of the heart. And he looks at the intents of the heart. And he can see that you're putting on the covering of America, of Europe, of Esau, and not of him. Adding sin to sin, meaning you're continuing in the practices which led to your destruction in the first place. That walk down to eat, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. At this time, as it says here in the caption, the worthless treaty of Egypt. And the treaty is a it says a generalized legal binding written agreement between actors in international law the treaties that was made with egypt was that we would give them money and they would quote unquote protect us but it was a worthless treaty it had no real value or use right trust in the shadow of egypt so the israel israelites would um send money to egypt for no for, to no avail therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Now in uh, Revelation 11 and 8, it tells you that this place, the place of the, um, the dead bodies shall lie in a great city. 
which is spiritually Sodom in Egypt. So America is spiritually Egypt, in which is a place of confusion, a place of bondage, a place of correction. And it's not it's not an empire that you should be putting your trust in. Neither was Egypt. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Haines. They were all ashamed of a, of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help, nor profit, but a shame and also reproach. The burden of the beast of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from whence come the young and old lion, the viper and the fiery serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses. Their treasures shall... And their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. This sentence alone lets you know and illustrates what we were doing. Sending, using these camels and these donkeys and these asses to go through crazy terrain where lions and vipers dwell. Just to send them money and riches that would not profit us. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Now, modern day America, all this help is in vain. You see these HBCUs that are basically ran by uh, chocolate-covered Edomites? They're in vain. They're supposed to be helpful. They're supposed to profit you, but they don't. FEMA and all these programs out here, they're in vain. Because the Lord is going to destroy this place. Anything less than that prevailing thought in your mind daily, and then you're, you're back in confusion world, bizarre world, the sunken place. So it's imperative to remember always that this place is going down whether you like it or not whether you're rich or not whether you just started making a living or not and it's going down very soon according to the scriptures for the ethiopians shall help in vain e egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose therefore have i cried concerning this their strength is to sit still the lord goes into a warning so now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book. As you can see, it's in the book. It's in the Bible. This is where we get in this enlightenment. Through the teachings of the apostles, we can understand what time we're in, who we are, the, the dread to come, the seriousness of the times. I mean, these times is so serious. Now we understand finally second grade dignity. But you just got to watch it, you know, watch your intake of the book, BS. That's why I made that last video. It says that this is a rebellious people, lying children. Oh, now go write it before them in a the table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So these warnings is for, was not for ancient Babylon and ancient Egypt. These warnings go on to every captivity in which we reserve all the way up into this modern day captivity in America where the Israelites, the true Israelites, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are wandering Jews or the lost tribes. Since that is a rebellious people, this is a rebellious people, lying children. Children will not hear the Lord of the Lord, will say to the sea and see not, and to the prophets, prophets are not until it's right things. You know, and that's why the scriptures say even the pro their, their, their shepherds pity them not. And the heathen laugh and mock at us because our own people will sell us short. But it's because the majority and bulk of our people want to be reprobate. Our reprobate men, void of judgment, void of understanding, not enlightened. They have the zeal not according to knowledge. They are pompous. They are proud. They are arrogant. And they're going to die in their deceit. Says prophesy unto, unto us right things, not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things, which is a you know a lie, you know smooth things, something easily, you know, smooth in a way that is without difficulties. You see that? Prophesy deceits, so they don't want their life to be difficult when you teach them. However, how do you warn somebody? Of eminent danger without making them a little uncomfortable if a brick or boulder is going to fall on your head and i don't push you the hell out the way or tackle you and then the boulder knocks you know hit, strikes down and you're safe and you get up and you're shaking the dust off you cussing me out then you are you you somebody i wouldn't help again next time i'm gonna let it fall in your head that's similar to the role of the prophets here so we we are right with our people don't get it twisted, man.
But we understand this is the commitment that the Lord made um, with us. That if we teach his word, he would, um, you know, take us out of here. You know, and get us out of here safely. Us and our families, Lord willing. And get you out of the path. Turn aside out of the, um, get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One visual to cease from before us. So I had, a, you know, I could have kept it going, but I'll stop it here. Lord willing, until next time, shalom.